guys, I hope your holiday season is going just as well as mine. Everyone's getting a bit of rest. Now, I want to start a conversation around slavery. Let's talk about it. I know it is a very awkward topic to talk about. Um, a lot of people don't know how to start, don't know where to ask questions. Uh, I like to think the first place to go is probably the library um, and the Library of Congress online. You can actually look up the WPA interviews where is straight from their mouths of the mouths of former enslaved persons and I think that's the best place to go um, and then you can start going to the library and looking at a variety of perspectives I think these are very important resources now today I got a question um, from a very close friend of mine and she simply wanted to know what would it have been like to be enslaved during the holidays and so let's delve into that. By mid-December, there would be a lull in most of the remunerative work on most small farms and plantations. The corn had been shucked and ground, the cotton had been picked and ginned, and this was a period of a lull. But every situation is different. It all depends on the owner, the location, and the profession. Now, enslaved persons who are working on boats, on the docks, or in factories, this may not be the case for them. But I'm speaking specifically to enslaved field workers and enslaved house servants on plantations and small par farms during the antebellum period. Some slave owners treated Christmas as just another work day. We know from the WPA interviews in the Library of Congress that this is a case for a small part of the population. Uh, one example is Jenny Lynn from North Carolina. Um, later in her life when she was being interviewed, she talked about not having, there not being games or gifts during the Christmas season. This is mostly not the case in most of my research. Most slave owners uh, celebrated Christmas and encourage their enslaved persons to celebrate Christmas in many different ways. They were getting anywhere from one day to eight days, sometimes from Christmas Eve all the way until New Year's Day. Again, depending on the owner location and the profits of any one plantation or small farm will determine what types of things enslaved persons are getting during the holidays. Some masters are giving out money, whiskey, rum, molasses, sugar, flour, uh, cakes, sweets for the children. It all depends. We specifically know that cold weather clothing allotments were passed out during this time as well. Uh, specifically, Ida Rains of Little Rock, Arkansas talks about her master going into town and coming back with a huge sack filled with the clothing allotment. Uh, also, the shoes for the entire year were passed out during this time. Ida also recalls getting four bits for just spending money, and she also recalls fun games during Christmas Eve and the children getting pieces of candy um, from their master or owner. This was also the time to go visit friends and family. Enslaved persons would ask their slave owners to write up a pass for them to go visit other plantations that may hold maybe a wife or a husband or children or family members. Uh, and this was really generally the only time that you had any extended period of time to actually go make these visits. A uh, pass is something that a slave owner would write where the enslaved person was going and for the duration they were allowed to be off the plantation. Another common occurrence during the holiday season for enslaved persons were parties and dances. We know this again from the WPA interviews. Horace Overstreet and Jack Bess of Texas talk about fun times that were had during the holidays at parties with their friends and family. This was a time in which the enslaved community could reassert their humanity 
and connect with one another and rebuild family and community bonds. While the work decreased in the fields, the work for enslaved house servants increased, doubled, tripled, quadrupled. Plantation households became a hub of activity. Friends and family from far and wide came to the plantation home to enjoy their time with their friends and family. Enslaved servants during the holidays were expected to keep up their regular duties, but in addition, they were expected to look after the extra guests in the house. So that meant putting together extra bedding, making sure that those extra fireplaces have fire in them and they're supplied with wood or coal depending on the area. Christmas was also a great opportunity for enslaved persons to run away. We know my girl Harriet Tubman helped her brothers run away on Christmas of 1854. A few days in which you were not going to be missed from your work assignment that allowed you a head start of two or three days. With all this said, I don't want you to get it twisted. I think it's very important that we put the benevolent acts of slave owners during the holidays into the context of a slave society. Hereditary chattel slavery was maintained in the United States of America through a reward punishment system. The pressure built, 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 but every so often they release the valve a little bit in order to release the pressure. If they didn't release the pressure, boom, explosion. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to doing more of them. Let me know down below what you thought and please remember to subscribe and like us.